Cavalcade of America, starring Irene Dunn, presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening. This is Irene Dunn. Tonight, our cavalcade story is called Bryant Station. This is a romantic and exciting story of what happened to Prudence Potter during an Indian attack on a pioneer outpost in the Kentucky wilderness. Now, Bryant Station, starring Irene Dunn as Mrs. Potter on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. wilderness of Daniel Boone, 1782, the dark and bloody ground, a year of terror in the frontier settlements, a year of savagery. Captain Craig. Yeah? Captain Craig. Yes, Hawkins. They found Corrigan in a ravine back of the stockade. Alive? Just about. What about Potter? He was with him. He ain't now. Come on. What is it you want to tell us, Corrigan? Simon Gertie done this. Gertie, that white renegade, leading a big war party, burned Potter at stake. Gertie threatens his Indians will kill every white settler in Kentucky. Has Corrigan any family? No. Potter had. Wife and three young'uns. Uh, anybody told her? We kind of figured you'd do that, Captain. Thoughtful of you. Well, if I must, I must. Big girl, she's getting to be. Then go, but Jane, see if she could stand by herself. It'll give her bull <laughs> No, it won't. Will it, Mom? <laughs> well, I don't think so. Oh, Papa's going to be so proud of his baby. Come here to Mom, Elizabeth. Come on, honey. Mom. Come on. When is Pa coming back? Any time now. Will he bring us something good from hunting, Mom? Well, he always does, doesn't he? Look, somebody's coming. Maybe it's Pa. The Pa certainly wouldn't knock. Come in. Oh, why, Captain Gray. Good day, Miss Potty. How nice to have you call. Won't you sit down, Captain? Well, I haven't time to stay, ma'am. I, well, uh, could I, could I see you private a moment? Certainly, Captain. Tommy, take the girls outside. All right, Ma. Come on, Jerry. Look, Captain Gray, I can carry Elizabeth all by myself. Yeah, fine, fine. Yes, that's wonderful. Now then, Captain. Mrs. Potter. Is there something about John? Yes, it is. Is there something bad? Very. What is it? John ain't coming back to Brian oh, Station, no. ma'am. No. Oh. I'm sorry, Mrs. Potter. If I can do anything, I... Oh, my poor Johnny. Now, please, Mrs. Potter. All the settlers will do anything to help you, ma'am. Yes. I know. Oh, I know, Captain Greg. Thank you. Well, I'll go now, Mrs. Potter, and you'll be all right, ma'am. I want to go outside. Well, it's a beautiful night, a moon, and... Yes, Kevin, I'll be all right. I had a bad dream. 
I couldn't get back to sleep. So I came out here. Come here, honey. Get up on my lap. You been sitting out here long, Ma? Seems so. The valley looks pretty in the moonlight. Look at our cornfield down there. Your father and I planted that in the spring. Ma, when is Pa coming back from hunting? Oh, tell me. I don't know, son. Oh, heck. Come on now, honey. We're, we're going to cabin and to bed. Ma, first sing me the song about Pa. You always sing me that song when I can't sleep. Now, Tommy, you mustn't ask me to sing now. Won't you, Ma? Please, won't you? Well, if I do, son, will you promise me something? Sure, Ma. What? Grow up so your father will be proud of you. Uh-huh. The song, Ma. Pa song. All right, honey. Give me that hoe. Now, you go mind the baby with your sister. I'll help you, Mother. All right. It's not necessary for you to help us with our work, Captain. Now, it's no reflection on your gardening abilities, ma'am, but this is a lot of work for a woman and three little ones. Well, we'll manage. Can I speak frank, ma'am? About what, Captain? Your plans. Oh. Now, it's not my affair, I know, except I'm in charge of the station here, and I feel kind of responsible for the folks in it. Well, you needn't be responsible for us. I just wondering what you were going to do next. Uh, the frontier's no place for a widow woman. Well, what are you suggesting, Captain? Oh, have you got people you can go to? My husband and I left Virginia to give our young ones a chance they ought to have in life. They can get it in Kentucky, and they're going to have it. Oh, then you're figuring to marry again? No, oh, Captain, I am not. No one could ever take my husband's place. Well, I don't say that, ma'am, but there's two or three single boys here at the station, any one of whom would be glad and lucky to have you. There's Tom Ashley, there's Lewis Boyd, then there's that widower Morrison. They're all mighty fine well, men. Have they appointed you their marriage broker, Castle? <laughs> well, ma'am, old bachelor like me, well, he's the last person who would know anything about marriage. Well, then, let me explain to you one thing. When it's been right once, you don't want marriage any way but that way again. Now, you tell that to Mr. Ashley, Mr. Boyd, Mr. Morrison, with my compliments. Oh, I'm only trying to be helpful, ma'am. And my advice would be to go back to Virginia. Never. You say that, but the truth is we may all be going soon. What do you mean? The way the Indians have been carrying on this year, it's got even Dan Boone worried. You heard about the settlement up the Blue Ridge being massacred. Yes, sir. Well, many more of those, you won't be able to pay the settlers to stay here. Well, I'll stay. And Tommy and the girls are going to stay, too, and they're going to have their chance. Captain Gray! Captain Gray! Uh, who's there? Hawkins and Tom Ashley. Please come in. Doors unlocked. I'm sorry to wake you, Captain, but Tom here's got something to tell you. Uh, what is it, Tom? Well, there's a bear has been involved in my stock. Great big critter. Seen him, but never got a shot at him for today. Well, sir, long about sundown, it did. 
hit him, too. Only the critter wouldn't drop. No, sir. You wake me up just to yap about a bear. So I says to myself, I says, that old bear ain't going to get away from me if I have to follow him clear to kingdom come. Which I did, only a couple miles short of. Then what do you think happened? What? That old bear got away, darn it. And that's my story. All of it? Except that coming back to the stockade tonight, I ran smack into the biggest Indian war party I ever met up with. What? Must be hundreds of them. Where? Surrounding the stockade, hiding back in the woods, but on all sides. Took me three hours to sneak in here. Could you sneak back through their lines, do you think, Ash? Yes, so. Go ahead, then. Get to Boonesboro as fast as you can. Have them send every man they can spare and tell them all you can about the war party. I'll tell them everything. Uh, just leave out about the bear. I want that relief here. This year. <laughs> well, what next, Captain? It's set for a dawn attack. Hmm? See that everybody has plenty of ammunition. Uh -huh. And whatever else you do, don't show any lights. I don't want our red friends to know we're expecting their little call. <laughs> and waiting with my rifle, Captain. Where are them Indians you promised I could shoot? Well, they're out there, all right. Yeah, but why don't they attack? It's past dawn now. Yeah, just wondering that myself. Captain Greg, huh? we got a lady here wondering just who she should load guns for during the fight. Well, Mrs. Johnson, just tell that lady to stand right by her husband like a good wife should. Oh, it's you, Mrs. Potter. I didn't realize who Mrs. Johnson meant. I'm sorry. That's all right, Captain, but I would like to help. <laughs> Got more spunk than all of us put together, this girl has. Well, I got no one to load my rifles for me, Mrs. Potter. If you'd help me, I'd like it fine. Whatever you want, Captain. Uh, Captain Greg, yes? what's the matter, Bannister? Well, during the night, that leak developed into a water barrel again. Oh, what? Water yes, we've hardly a drop oh, left. Oh. Can't hold out long without water. Yeah, but how are we going to get it? Well, can't we send a bunch of armed men to the spring? No, no, that'd be ambush, sure. Besides, it'd tell how much we need water. Yeah. All they have to do is lay siege to us for a few days. Oh, that's right, Captain. Well, oh, there ought to be a better way of getting Captain, it than that. why are the Indians waiting now before they attack? Well, they probably figure we don't know they're here. They're waiting for the men to go outside the stockade and work in the fields, and then they'll attack. Well, in that case, I know how to get the water. Oh, Mrs. Bond. The way we always get it. Let the women and children go. And have you all oh. cut down in cold blood? It's our only chance, Captain. We've got to have water, and they'd never let the men bring it back. Us, they might. Now, what women would be willing to take a chance like that? I would. You, Mrs. Johnson? Well, and so would I, and so would plenty others. You'll see. You mean that all these are gone, Mrs. Potter? Uh, one woman in Brown Station refused, Captain. Well, what are all the children here for? Well, I figure the Indians have probably had their scouts here for days. If so, they know the children always go with us for water. They'd be suspicious if they didn't go this time. Ma'am, think what you're saying. Would, would you want yours to go? Well, you say they're going, Captain. Aren't you, Tommy? Aren't you, Jane? I'm not afraid. I am. I'm taking my Betsy along, too. Well, then we'll have men posted on the stockade, and if there's any trouble, we'll come out shooting and do what we can. And God bless you all. All ready, Miss Johnson? Indeed we are, Miss Potter. And I think the captain can open the gate. Yes, ma'am. Open the gate. Baby. All right. Come. Let's go. Listening to Bryant Station, starring Irene Dunn as Mrs. Potter on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. The Kentucky wilderness, an early morning in 1782. Mrs. Potter and her friend Jemima Johnson are leading the women and children of Bryant Station to a spring outside the stockade, knowing it's surrounded by hostile Indians. 
sight over to eastward. How many? Oh, not over a dozen or so. Looks like a small raiding party. Maybe Ashley was wrong about how many were around no, here. No, I don't think so. Whenever an Indian lets himself be seen, there's some purpose in it. If they want us to see 12, there's a purpose in that. They want us to think that's all of them there are, probably. Yeah, but suppose it is only 12. We could finish them off in no time. And while we're out doing that, what happens at the stockade? Yeah. Yeah, you figure it's a trick. I know it's a trick. Furthermore, it's the same one they used at Boonesboro last year. Well, maybe we can make it work to our advantage. How's that? Take 14 or 15 men. Send them out east, apparently, after the Wyandots that way. Uh -huh. Make a lot of noise. Fire a lot. Try to sound like the whole force. And then turn around get back inside just as quickly as you can make it. Join the rest of us at the Westgate Wall. We'll be waiting for them there. Why Westgate? Well, that's where I figure the main attack will be. That bunch you saw in the east must be making a feint. And when the main attack comes at the west gate, there's going to be a mighty surprise bunch of Indians. Well, there go Hawkins and his boys. Yes, it does sound like our whole fort. Now to see if our bait catches any fish. That's the last of them. That's one Indian trick they won't try again for a while. I still don't see how we're so much better off. We've killed a few, yes, and we've driven them off, but we're still surrounded by Wyandots. And meanwhile, we've all got our scalps. Look, one of them coming toward the stockade with a white flag. Hold your fire, men. If the flag gets through. Oh, another Indian trick, probably. Well, let's see what they want to talk about. Look, it's a white man. Ma'am, I wouldn't call him that. It's Simon Gertie. The Simon Gertie? Did... Yes, the same. Members of Bryant Station. All right, quiet, men, quiet. I want to hear this. Members, you are surrounded. We're very snug, too, Simon Gertie. <laughs> but that can't last. We're getting some artillery. It'll be here within two hours. A few balls against those gates of yours, and you won't be quite so snug. You ain't got cannon. Oh, yes, we have, gentlemen. But all you have to do to save your scalps is to surrender peaceably. And give me a word as one Christian to another. You'll go back to Virginia. 
I don't believe you got cannon. You can find out any way you choose, gentlemen. You have two hours to make up your mind. Look here, men. We'd best accept Sam and Gertie's terms. Now, we've no choice. Oh. And he said if we surrender, we'll save our scalps. But who can trust that renegade, Simon Gertie? Don't you see? We've got to. Otherwise, we're all dead men in three hours. But we don't know for sure they've got cannon. Well, even if they haven't cannon, we can't hold out forever. There's help coming from Boonesboro. But how do we know that actually got through safe? No. Let's all go back while we got the chance. Yeah, that's what I said. No, no, no. Help will come from Boonesboro. Wait and see. Who are in favor of going? Who says stay? Well, it seems as if half of us want one thing and half want the other. One minute, please. I've got another vote to cast here. The women can't vote here. Well, I'm not suggesting they do, sir. But I brought my son Thomas here with me to cast his vote. His father was killed in line of duty for this Kentucky frontier for all of us here at Bryant Station. And I think there's that much inheritance due my son. And so do I, ma'am. How do you vote, son? I say we should tell Simon Gertie to go to, to the bad place where he belongs. Uh, 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 well, look here, this makes no sense. Now, Miss Potter put the words right in his well, mouth for him. put them in yours, Mr. Bannister. To trust Simon Gertie, the man who watched my husband burned at the stake by the Wyandots and didn't leave, lift a hand to save him. How can you be such fool? Oh, yeah. right. Yes, but maybe Gertie means what he says about sparing us this time. Even if he did, I tell you, we've got to stay. We came here for a better chance, all of us. And I'm going to see that my children get that chance. All right, what do you say, man? Do we quit with Bannister, or do we fight with the lady? We fight! <laughs> like they're getting ready to attack. Do you suppose they have the artillery? Well, this is one way to find out. It sure is, Captain. You know, Mrs. Potter, it occurs to me that there are four bachelors at this place. I thought of that myself. Now, I know that I could never take the place of your husband or anything like that, but... Well, maybe... You, Maybe, ma'am, if we pull through here, I could help your young ones get that better chance that you talked about. Captain Greg. Yes, Miss Potter. Captain, I think perhaps you could. Oh, well, I'd consider it a real honor. What's that about? Why the drum stopping, Captain? I don't know. What's that? I sure do, Hawkins. The militia from Boonesboro, Mrs. Potter. As I was saying, I'd, I'd like it fine if you'd... if you'd marry me. I'd like it fine, too, Captain. That's the story of Bryant Station and of its frontier folk in the Kentucky wilderness of 1782. And the nation they helped secure was one day to be served conspicuously by one of the persons there that day of battle, an infant in a cradle. Richard Mentor Johnson, who grew up to become ninth vice president of the United States. Later on in Washington, people used to say, he must have come from good, courageous stock. And if you ask us, we'd say so too.
week, Cavalcade will present the popular Hollywood stars Linda Darnell and John Hodiak in an original radio play, The Blue Cockade. It's a love story set against the background of danger at Morristown, New Jersey, during the American Revolution. Be sure to join Cavalcade next week, then, for Linda Darnell and John Hodiak. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, Bryant Station, was an original radio play written by Frank Gabrielson and was suggested by a chapter entitled Jemima Johnson in the book Women in American History by Grace Humphrey. The program was directed by Jack Zoller. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryant. Chuck Webster played Captain Gregg. By uniting the fundraising campaigns of its participating organizations under the sign of the Red Feather, the Community Chest of America guarantee effective and total distribution of your funds to bring help and welfare to people in every walk of life. Remember, everybody benefits, everybody gives. This is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week to The Blue Cockade, starring Linda Darnell and John Hodiak. Cavalcade of America comes to you each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Thank mm-hmm. you.